Welcome friends to uh, this Total Health channel and uh, we will be talking today about an important topic. Surprise! Why God lets uh, Muslims take Jerusalem. That's in Zechariah 14, this last chapter. And why? Well, Israel has failed to count the sevens that God gave them. If they walk contrary to him, he was going to punish them seven times over. And they failed to, <laughs> again, they can't count the seven, okay? It would happen the first time with uh, uh, when they didn't rest the land every seventh year. And God uh, allowed Babylon to take them for uh, the uh, seven times, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, they failed to count the seven years. And so uh, the, the bottom line was they went into captivity for 70 years. And um, when they, uh, in Z Daniel 9th chapter, there's a 70 times 7, where they, uh, the, the next one was 70 times 7. Uh, it was 490 years, but that took 69 weeks to the Messiah. It was 70 weeks, but 69 weeks to Messiah. They missed the Messiah. And uh, the final sevens is uh, the, we have the time period in Ezekiel, fourth chapter, verse four, five, six, when e Ezekiel's asked to lie on his side 390 days, each day for a year, Israel was in apostasy. And it, it gives, it, that implies they were in apostasy for 390 years, and times seven would be 37, I'm sorry, 2730 years. That's a long time. And uh, Sennacherib came in 722, so the math is pretty easy. 2730 minus 722 is 2008. But there was no year zero when Messiah was born, so it's 2009. And in that year, um, Pope Benedict came, but Rome was assigned to flee and to get out of Jerusalem because uh, that's when uh, Christians got out of Jerusalem when Titus came. Uh, actually, it was Cestius who came, but Titus came later, and the Christians were spared the siege by Titus. Uh, so the, the point is, God, if we would listen to Christ, we could be spared, basically. And uh, yet the Jews are, are not doing that, and uh, they, they uh, think they're going to prevail, but I got news for them. When, uh, it's, and it's really in their own uh, prophecies. This is uh, D Daniel 9th chapter. I'm sorry, 8th chapter, a ram and goat conflict. Verse 17 says it's the vision is at the time of the end. And a goat comes flying from the west and stomps a militant Muslim ram that's pushing from the Middle East. It's pushing north into Russia, south into Africa, west to Europe and the New World. And uh, the idea is that... Uh, half fulfilled with with the horns on the ram are said to be Medes and Persians but that's Iraq and Iran today we've done Iraq we don't want war with Iran question is what what makes the goat angry to fight the war uh, fight Iran and it really is what our topic is when when Muslims take Jerusalem again that will make the ram angry and so uh, um, the question is why is all this happening? I think it's, it's, uh, we're entering a time of judgment. And uh, it's judgment first on Jews. That, uh, they they uh, missed it first time. When, uh, uh, and so God is going to let uh, the Muslims take them out. The, a Messianic rabbi shared with me the insight that uh, uh, Israel today is not really Israel. Uh, they, they're, they don't have any spiritual interest in their heritage as Israelites. they just there for free land. Uh, it was the UN's land that uh, they thought, and UN gives it to them, but really it's God's land. And God gave promise to Abraham the land for his seed. And uh, that included Jews as long as they were walking in the light. But also in Galatians 3.29, uh, it says, if you're Christ, you're Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. So uh, as we enter the end time 
when there's going to be global government and world control by uh, a false power, Antichrist power. It uh, shows this power in Revelation 13. And uh, when you can't buy or sell unless you have a, a mark of compliance, it's uh, false worship in verses 14 or 15. Uh, going to be a bad situation with world control. Uh, and the UN has got a bad record anyway. Uh, they have uh, often raped women in the countries that they go to peace keep. And uh, the latest uh, thing that I've seen really against them badly is that they, uh, they think in the, uh, they're recommending the educational systems to provide sexual partners for kids uh, uh, as they approach teenage. Uh, not good. Uh, you know, that's that's bad situation. So um, uh, this is part of the beast system. And I, I believe that God is going to provide a way for us that's in Scripture that we need to understand. So first, judgment comes to Jews. It gets the unbelieving Jews out. But then uh, Muslims aren't believers either. And uh, I can easily imagine that they will celebrate their mosque and Quran, which says Allah has no son. When suddenly the Lord will roar from Jerusalem, the heavens and earth will shake. Uh, that's why the word roar? Because um, Yeshua, the Messiah, is called the Lion of Judah in Revelation 5.5. And so that's, uh, if Israelites want to understand and Jews want to understand it, uh, why the roar? It's it, those two uh, uh, Old and New Testament fit together as part of God's story. It's like the two olive trees in Zechariah. Uh, this Old and New Testament. Jews, will you wake up before it's too late? I hope so. Uh, God loves you. Times of ignorance, he winks. You're not responsible for the past, but you can be uh, uh, included in God's uh, format and plan because uh, he wants Jews who will accept the Messiah to be put together with uh, Christians who accept uh, the Torah, the laws. That's really... Uh, the last chapter of the Old Testament. Malachi 4, verse 4. Remember the law of Moses with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I send you Elijah. Well, Elijah was sent before to turn Israel to the true God, true worship, when they were worshiping a, a calf. And uh, the calf was called Baal. Do you know the translation of Baal? It's Lord. And Christians call God Lord and Christ Lord and so on. But we're coming to a time when names will be important. And we need to go by the names that we, we understand. And both Jews and Christians are uh, sadly lacking in those names. Uh, they don't, uh, it's not Yahweh and it's, it's not uh, Jesus Christ, okay? There was no J in Hebrew for Jesus or Jehovah. No J in Greek. How did we get Jesus? It's the Society of Jesus, Jesuits, that did that. And they infiltrated the translation process and they got rid of God's name. Uh, they, uh, uh, if you Google the Tetragrammaton, it means four letters. Tetra meaning four. Four letters of God's name were removed. They were a Yod, He, and a Vav, and another He. And uh, I... I'm confident that this has more meaning than we want to go into right now. But uh, I'd, I'd just like to say that when Muslims take Jerusalem, uh, I'm confident uh, they won't be there long because uh, they're going to celebrate their mosque and, and the Quran that says Allah has no son and the Lord is going to roar. I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe the timing would be just perfect when there's uh, celebrating it and all of a sudden the biggest earthquake that has ever hit this planet because it says the Lord will roar the heavens and earth will shake and uh, it's for the day of the Lord in Isaiah 2 verse 12 day of the Lord again we find it and verse 21 if you flip 12 to 21 God will shake terribly the earth so uh, it will cause fear you know, it's uh, says, fear God, give glory to him. 
Uh, Amos 3, 7 says, God won't do anything without revealing it. The lion has roared, who will not fear? In other words, everybody's going to be afraid. Uh, and I believe that uh, we will either run toward God to deliver us, or we'll run away from God to do our own thing. And uh, I think that's the frying pan to the fire. You, you will not uh, do well if you run from God. You can't run away. Uh, Jonah proved that. <laughs> Even in the belly of the whale, God was with him. <laughs> and he, he came back to Nineveh, and uh, I, I think they had a fish god. And when the fish vomits uh, Jonah out, they thought he had a message for them from God. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, at least that's my... Uh, um, I've heard that expressed that way. So... Uh, I believe we're on the verge of big stuff coming soon. And I don't know just when. I know that, uh, interestingly enough, that uh, twice in history, the temple in Jerusalem burned on the 10th day of the 5th Jewish month. You can read about it in Jeremiah 52, verse 10. And uh, maybe not, maybe it's uh, um, 12 and 13, I think it is. Okay. But uh, tenth day of the fifth month, and uh, and again when Titus uh, under Titus the temple got burned. Titus didn't want the temple burned, but somebody threw a, a flaming spear in, and the temple ignited uh, with its wood. So uh, anyway, uh, I believe we may see it again. In a, in a, we're right now in the second month. This is May, but uh, we will be getting into uh, the third and fourth month. The tenth day of the fifth month is just a couple months away, basically, less than that. So uh, hang on to your hats, and let us uh, I'd like to encourage you to get this book because you can be prepared, because when the Lord roars, the heavens and earth shake, uh, that earthquake is encoded uh, two different ways in um, uh, the New Testament, actually more than that, but... Uh, it says, when, be ready when I come and knock, that you open immediately in, X, in uh, Luke 12, verse 36. But the knock is also seen for the last uh, lukewarm church, Laodicea, lukewarm with materialism, keeping Christ outside knocking. Uh, we like the little idea that Christ is always knocking in our hearts, but, uh, and that's a good meaning. That's a legitimate meaning. But also, he's going to, the final knock is going to be an earthquake that because the ancient church of Laodicea ended in an earthquake. And I think that will end our lukewarm um, focus on materialism when things are gone. <laughs> then we got to go to God, okay? And I just say, uh, hang on to your hats because I believe it's still coming in a couple months. I thought it might be it, uh, this month of May and uh, because of... Uh, no man knows the day or hour, but as the days of Noah, which the flood came in the second spring month. But uh, that also can imply uh, a, a timing delay. Uh, Christ took a long journey to heaven. He will return when things are ripe and ready. Uh, and he'll come as a thief in the night, it says in Revelation 3.3. 3. God came as a thief to Israel, uh, uh, to Egypt, really. Uh, he stole Israel's... Uh, slaves and delivered Israel, took them to a covenant. And uh, he said, if you keep my covenant, you'll be a kingdom. And he also said, return, I'm married to you. That's Jeremiah 3, verse 14. He regarded the covenant as a marriage. So if we want to be ready for the marriage and the covenant when he comes and knocks, this book here, Earthquake and Seven Seals, can help you be ready because it's how we uh, can offer Christ seven topics that he is interested in because they have a sevenfold emphasis in scripture and they will protect us for the last seven years. And uh, I believe that's important uh, to be ready and understand what those are. They are topics that have gotten edited out of uh, Christian, Christian faith. Uh, Christ said, beware the leaven of Pharisees, meaning their doctrines in Matthew 16, verse 12. And we need to understand what those are. They have a, It's like the statutes and judgments of Malachi 4 and 5, 4, 4, verse 4 and 5, when it says, Remember the law of Moses with statutes and judgments. Behold, I'll send you Elijah. Those statutes and judgments have a sevenfold emphasis in Ezekiel 20, or uh, 
It's statutes, judgments, Sabbaths. They're linked to the Sabbaths. And uh, I'm seeing that Revelation has seven churches, seven seals, seven trumpets, seven thunders. Things that have a sevenfold emphasis are for the end time. So uh, we're going to need to do that to have a covenant and to be God's kingdom and his bride. So uh, wise virgins get into the wedding and we can be them. So hang on to your hats. Uh, visit my website for this. Um, three words everybody wants. Health, happiness, destiny dot com. That's easy enough to remember. And uh, look for the books. Uh, you can see some other information that has, I think, high interest as well. So God bless you. Thank you for your time. And we'll see you again uh, at the top.